What they doing, YouTube? This skip coming to you live. Shout out to Real Hot Six Aquatic Kennels. This video is by special request. Uh, after making the video on how to tell the difference between Midas and Labianum's Red Devils, a lot of questions have arrived out of that video. So, this is my attempt to answer some of those questions in one swoop. And right before you is a clay pot with some Bafossi Autumn Fry. My buddy Chuck, what's up Chuck? Congratulations. Called me over his house uh, to check out his Bafossi Autumns. They were laying eggs, the female laid eggs and the male fertilized them, but he noticed the first time the female had eating the eggs and the second time I noticed that the male was eating the eggs so what we decided to do is I decided to take the the flower pot with the eggs out of his tank and bring them over to my house and put them in one of my incubating tanks and hatch the eggs myself so that we could see whether or not he had a you know a viable uh, pair and see whether or not the male was fertilizing the eggs at all. And um, of course, here we go, we know it. He is fertile, both male and female, by Fossey Autumn. It's a beautiful pair by Fossey Autumns. And the eggs have just hatched this morning around four o'clock. It's four o'clock in the morning. Some of them turn white, but a lot of them turn brown. And the sad thing about it, I believe this female had laid eggs all the way, all, all the way towards the back of this flower pot. But the male was eating all the eggs. And the female tried to defend the eggs from the male, but she just couldn't handle the pressure from the male. But let's get on the topic at hand. So let's get right into it. After that video, that presentation where I explain the differences between labianums and centronellum ampelopa species, it brought up a lot of questions. And a, and a lot of people have sent me questions asking me about genetics, asking about DNA, asking me about hybrids and one guy in particular asked me a question he sent to my personal box, I don't want to mention his name or his his, um, his YouTube account name but basically what he said was he, he, he wrote three paragraphs so he know who I'm talking about I'm, I'm sure he's watching this video right now and I was like shoot to answer this question man I'm gonna have to do a video on this alone but basically, his question was to me is, what's wrong with hybrids? And he thought that a hybrid was something created outside the genos and species. So in other words, he was thinking that as long as it's in the genos family, it doesn't have to be the same species, but it's in the genos family, it wasn't considered a hybrid. And he can correct me if I'm wrong. And assuming that's what he was trying to convey to me. So I'm here to try to answer his question, a few other questions, and put this to rest. Because I know this is a hot button topic. I know a lot of people get riled up and this, this get the blood flowing when you talk about hybridizing, when you talk about DNA. and hybridizing and you talk about flower horns and things of that nature a lot of people this is a hot hot button topic I'm sure this video as I finish making it will probably wind up on monster fish keepers and let's focus in a little bit that's my lion's eye my female pyro trimex that's mellow yellow one of my trifectas that's my islatum izzy Miss Veyron that's Miss Veyron, people. Miss Veyron has a very unique story. 
It's my other little young Pyro. That's actually Mellow Yellow's brother. But Miss Veyron has somehow got through the divider in one of my 75s that, that housed um, King Bugatti. And King Bugatti went to work on her. And I mean, he had all her scales from both sides of her body ripped off. She, it was to the white meat. She was floating upside down in my aquarium. And so of course I came home from work. I found her floating and I had to do something about it because this is one of my favorite fish, one of my favorite females. I can't wait to breed her with Baraka and produce some awesome trifectas. She is a trifecta. She is off of uh, King Rodan, Big Rodan over there, my wild caught yellow race uh, trimex. And look, she's healing up pretty well. Look, her scales are coming back. You can still see a little bit of the, the scales, the remaining scales that are missing on the side of her body. But she's, she's, she's coming around pretty good. You know, I play some salt. You know, I have some old school remedies, uh, golden seal and echinacea. I mix it with some metaflex and things of that nature. Oh man, Mellow Yellow is showing out. But let me not get off the topic at hand. Because you know me, I get distracted looking at these fish. So basically, we're going to go over a few basic fundamental facts. When you're dealing with DNA, and when you're dealing with species complex, you first have to have the principles down pat. You have to know the order that they come in. First is the family, then it's the genos, and then it's the species. So, in order for your fish not to be a hybrid, your fish have to meet those requirements. Your fish have to be in the same family, the same genos, and the same species. If one of those are taken out of the equation, your fish is a hybrid. That's the bottom line. You can look it up. We're going to do some genetics one-on-one. -on -one. I can't get too deep into it because I really don't have the time. It's early in the morning. I have to get to work. But I will try to give you guys some of the fundamentals. It's July 23rd, 2013. So this is live, people. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop this video and publish it today so you guys can get it. Now, a little known fact you, you probably don't know. A lot of you guys probably don't know about. And that is that cichlids have the largest number of endangered species among vertebrae. The vertebrae family are cichlids. Now, some people are like, well, what, what makes a cichlid a cichlid or this between a cichlid? I, I will get into that in another video. I can't quite get into it right now. But that's to say, cichlids are the only fish that have the extended two jaws. That's for one thing. They're vertebrates. That's another thing. And it's approximately like, if I'm not mistaken, about 300 endangered species in the cichlid family. Most of them are bottom dwellers and stuff like that. And um, some of them basically survive. Get this people, survive by hybridizing with other species. So hybridizing is a way some species need to survive. Some species of fish, the male is a separate species from the female, but in order for them to reproduce, they have to hybridize in nature. This happened naturally. Because nature has figured out a defense for certain fish so that they wouldn't go into uh, extinction. That's one thing that is positive about hybrids. And I'm, I'm going to do both sides, people, because I don't want to seem like I'm biased. I'm not into hybrids. Everybody know that. I'm not a hybrid guy. I don't, I don't particularly agree with hybridizing. But I, I'm, I'm not against the fish themselves because it's not their fault. But I, I don't like when people hybridize for commercial use and people do it just, just because they can. You know what I mean? I know some people say, well, hey, Skip, that's just your opinion. And that's just my opinion. You know, I, I'm entitled to my opinion, but I don't believe in hybridizing. I don't believe in blending different race of cichlids or species of cichlids with other species just to produce something with more color or more genetic traits that you desire. Because I believe that nature provides all that for us. But let me get back to the topic. So the guy asked me whether or not it was wrong for him to keep 
his hybrid. I, I don't know if he called it a a, a my devil or a, a whatever mid devil or something like that. And the answer to that is no. If you got attached to the fish and you love your fish, keep your fish. There's nothing wrong with keeping your hybrid if that's your thing. It's not my thing, but it's your thing. So you know, do what you do what you do best and do what's best for you. I mean, if I get attached to a fish, I'm gonna keep it. And uh, the answer to your other question is no. You have to have it in order in order for you to have a purebred bred species. I'm going to give you an example. And hopefully you guys understand this because I have to go. I have to get ready to go to work. Let's say, for instance, we talk about the big cat family. Tigers, lions, cougars, pumas, cheetahs, things of that nature. The feline family. Now, within that family, you have, like I said, tigers and lions. If a tiger was to breed with a lion, was a crossbreed with a lion, that would be considered a hybrid, people. Because at the end of the day, you don't have a tiger or a lion. And I've seen it on YouTube. Some people have already done that. Especially over there in Japan and Asia. They do a lot of hybridizing over there for some reason. I don't know what the, what's the obsession in that country for hybrids. But they call it a liger. See, it's something other than a tiger or a lion. But, for example, if a Siberian tiger was to breed with a Bengal tiger, that's a cross line breed. Because the Bengal tiger and the Siberian tiger are in the same family, the same genus, and the same species. This is a different variant of the species. And the reason why you have different variants of species is because you have a thing that's called genetic mutation. And genetic mutation occur when the things that surround your mind change, like your environment. And bio means surround and mint means mind. Whatever surround your mind. So a Bengal tiger, of course, is in a, a more tropical environment. And a Siberian tiger, of course, is in a more cold wilderness environment. I mean, it's, it's a cold climate. They come from two different environments. And so they pull from two different gene pools in, in order to survive. The Siberian tiger has a thick coat and it's huge. It's the largest cat on the planet. Whereas the Bengal tiger, on the other hand, is slightly smaller. It's not even, a lion is bigger than a Bengal tiger. But they're both tigers. At the end of the day, if a Bengal tiger was a crossbreed with a Siberian tiger, you still have a tiger. Just like if an Asian elephant was a crossbreed with an African elephant, you still have an elephant at the end of the day because they both in the same family, the same genus, and they both the same species. You don't end up with a, a hippo. You don't end up with a rhino when you crossbreed the two elephants. You end up with an elephant. But if hippos and rhinos are sort of in the same family with elephants. They're not the same species. They're not even the same genus, but they are in the same family. But if you crossbreed the two, you're going to have a hybrid. Now, I'll do another video and go a little deeper into the difference between hybridizing and crossbreeding and line breeding. Or, later on when my book drop, you can read my book. I talk about that in my book. That's one, those are some of the topics that I talk about. But I just wanted you guys to get the basics. Now understand, DNA is a genetic blueprint of a cell. Because I know a lot of people ask me questions, what's DNA then? DNA is a genetic blueprint of a cell. All living things and organisms have a genetic makeup. And that's called DNA. It's also considered memory, people. DNA is memory. You ever wonder how certain animals, they call it instincts, have the instincts to swim or do certain things that their parents do without being taught, that's DNA. And so now I'm going to show you some pictures of some world famous hybrids and some fish that some people just don't know are hybrids. And that's true. So, so the bottom line is this people, all hybrids aren't bad, but Hybrids aren't good. All hybrids aren't good as well. You have good and bad. You have the pros and cons when you're dealing with hybridizing. I had a buddy. I have a buddy. 
this guy, he's been in a hobby longer than I have. And he's a, he's a, he's a good friend of mine. I, I just met him like four years ago. He's big in the hobby. He's been in the cichlid magazine. He loved discus. He loved African cichlid. He loved koi fish. He has, a, he has two big huge ponds in his backyard with koi in it. And this guy called me up one night. This is a true story, people. And he said, Skip, I'm getting tired of hearing about these hybrids. I'm getting tired of this flower horn craze. Every time you look, these flower horns popping up everywhere. People are confused. They don't know if they have a red devil or flower horn or Texas cichlid or red Texas and this and that and other. And I told him, I said, yeah, but you know, to each his own, man. The only way that we can stop this from growing out of control is to educate people. He said, man, forget all about that. I'm just sick of him. I said, look. I said, man, a lot of people don't even know they have hybrids. He said, whatever, Skip. You should know what you have. You've been in the hobby long enough. You should know what you have. And here we go, people. I had to break it down to him. I said, I said, you know, you, with all due respect, you even have hybrids in your uh, house. And in your yard, he said, what? Then he got real quiet. I broke it down to him. I said, those koi fish you have in your backyard in the pond, those are hybrids. Koi's are hybrids between carp and goldfish. Look it up, do your research. They've been hybridized years ago, decades ago. That's a hybrid. Most of those discus that you have in your aquarium are hybrids. 60% of those African cichlids that you have are hybrids. I know you, you, he loves North American species. I told him, them bluegills, those tiger muskies, those famous tiger muskies and blue, those are hybrids. You know, but this guy, he hung up the phone on me. And, and we hadn't talked for like a whole month. And then a month later he called me and this was his way of apologizing. He, you know, basically said, hey, Skip, how you doing? And this and that and other. We ain't even mention what happened. I ain't even say nothing to him. I was just listening. And he said, yeah, you know what? I apologize, Skip. After doing my research, I realized that you were right. Some of the fish I had were hybrids. And yeah, if I didn't know that they were hybrids, then a lot of other people may not know they're hybrids. I said, well, thank you. Thank you for the apology. And I left it at that. Now we're back to being, you know, friends again or buddies but that's just a true story that's just something I want to drop on you guys uh, I'm gonna let you guys take a look at some pictures and some photos of some some famous hybrids and some fish that are hybrids but a lot of people don't even know are hybrids right now take a look Okay guys, I hope you have a greater understanding of my stance on the topic. And I don't want you to go away thinking that 
I think that hybrid is a bad word. I don't think that hybrid is a bad word. I think that we just need to be more responsible as breeders of cichlids. So, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And by the way, don't go nowhere. I have something to show you. My new first round draft pick coming from my man Chuckus. His name is Grave Digger. And he will be a part of the Real Hard Sickness family real soon. Thank you.